Hello, Crispin here again. Today's video is going to show the making of two of these components. They are main frames, or that's what they're called on the drawing, and they basically form the two main parts of the chassis. These run uh, down each side of the locomotive underneath the boiler and are responsible for holding everything the right distance apart and spacing everything out right. Uh, so this video will show the making of them. I've got a large piece of 3mm black mild steel which I'm going to cut into two strips and rivet together. I'm going to put rivets in these positions here which will be cut out eventually and that way I only have to make one of them if you like and then I can split it and I'll have two. So I'll show you the steps I've taken to make two of these and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. I appreciate it might be difficult to understand what the shape is looking at the drawing so small but this is the basic outline that I'm going to be cutting. The first thing I'm going to do is get a couple of edges as I can take measurements from. So I want to get a flat edge between this point here and this point here which will be the straight edge from around here to here. That's about 17 inches and the travel on my milling machine over there when you consider the walls and all the other um, things getting in the way. I've only got about 15 inches travel so seeing as I'm not actually trying to remove any metal or uh, much metal, I just want to get a flat surface, I'm going to file it. I'm going to start with a fairly rough file and just bring the length down until they meet on the same level. Okay, I've got a satisfactory level now and so I'm just putting some ink on these surfaces to test for flatness. So what I do now that I've got a layer of ink on is to rub this on a flat surface and see where the ink gets rubbed off. And the places where the ink gets rubbed off will be the high spots on this workpiece. And then I'll file the high spots and try again. And after a few times going through, I hope to end up with a continuous strip of ink being rubbed off. Therefore meaning that it's all on one level. I've rubbed it on the surface table now and I've got a shiny surface here a bit, a very little bit here and a bit here, so I'm going to file those areas down, re-ink it and rub it on the surface table. Okay, so I'm nearly there now. I've got, uh, I've got some main high spots that you might be able to see, but also I can see that the ink is being rubbed off very lightly in places, so I just need to take these ones down a touch and I should be about there. When it gets very close I like to use a little needle file so that you can remove a very precise area. Here's the surface table I'm using and I'm also using this angle plate so I hold the frames up against the angle and then when I check for flatness it also gives me an indication of squareness. So I'm more or less done now I think. I've, I've blacked these edges up again with a pen so let's see where I've got to. Okay, so hopefully it'll focus. So from about here, you can see I've got pretty continuous silver, which is where so it's telling me that I'm more, more or less flat, or as flat as I'm going to get without spending a lot longer on it. So between those points, I've got a fl pretty flat surface, so I can move on now. 
So now that I've got a flat edge, I'm going to uh, use this edge to set it up in the milling machine. So I'm going to set this edge parallel in the milling machine and then cut this end and this cut out here while it's uh, all set up. From then I can get the overall length right and eventually cut across here to produce this cut out. The way I'm doing this is I've milled both ends so they're square and now I'm going to mark with a height gauge from each end and then see how the lines compare and from there I'll know how much I have to take off one end or the other. Now that the overall length is right and I have the majority of the profile up here cut I'm going to concentrate on the width. Uh, that's basically made up of one straight line along here and a slightly shallower part here and here. To do this I'm going to machine from here to here. I'm going to call this a breakout point. Then I'm going to machine from here to here and then finally get this last bit later on. I'm going to start with the head of the bridge port swung over here and I can machine then my first area. Then I'm going to swing the head round to its normal position to do from here to here and then finally I'll swing it round once more to do from here to here. What you do? I'm just taking a very light climb milling cut now, about 3 thou just to finish off. As described earlier, I started with the head at this end, or uh, angled over here, and uh, machined the first length, and stopped at one of my breakout points. Then I've got the head swung round back to normal now, it's nearly straight, and I'm just finishing this length off. So I'm going to mark out all these hole positions now using um, a height gauge and then I can centre punch and drill them. I'm just putting some counter sinks in here. The holes I drilled already, and I'm just counter sinking both sides for a uh, counter sunk screw. Rotating the bit backwards by hand and pressing down slightly helps to align the um, hole. And I'm using a clamp because this uh, counter sink or work tends to wobble around and end up with a multi-sided hole. On to the final set of holes now, which are these uh, ten here. These will hold the cylinders on, and they're marked out on this sloping line, which uh, runs at a slight angle uh, going down that way. Um, I'm marking out on the frames here uh, the angle using slip gauges and dowels. So I've got an amount at this end and uh, a smaller amount at that end. And then I will scribe on the uh, line to follow. Once I've got the line, I've made this drilling jig 
which I can uh, position along the line and use as a template to accurately uh, position the holes. The holes are now more or less complete and the overall piece is about to size. The next job to do is some of the uh, shaping, so let's take a look at the drawing. The bits really left to go are this cut out here, this one, this one and these two larger ones. At the moment I have rivets in all these areas holding the two uh, different plates together. So I want to do as much work as possible before cutting those areas out. Um, for instance, I'll finish this radius off up here and this cut out down here. Um, then what I'll do is I'll put some bolts through the holes I've recently drilled. Then I can go ahead and cut these areas out and finish them uh, with the two pieces still staying together. Just marking out for this radius now. I'll cut that out now with a grinder or a hacksaw and file it to size. I'm just filing this three and a half inch radius here. Um, my method for filing a radius is to use a fairly rough file and get somewhere down near the line. Then I'll switch to a slightly less coarse file and file in this kind of a motion, rocking in the opposite way to the radius. And the idea of that is to prevent any flat spots uh, from ending up on, on the curve. This radius uh, will be in fresh air, so it's simply a nice curve to look at. So working to the line and getting a nice curve will be all that's required really, as long as it starts in the, and finishes in the right place. Okay, I'm happy with that now. I can just get the final or uh, start to smooth it all up with a draw filing action now, taking care not to disrupt the curve. And the final step, I'm back to the rocking motion now with some emery cloth. Just producing this cutout now, which as you can see is a three quarter inch radius um, with a sloping back. On a fairly low spindle speed to reduce chatter. Moving on now, and I'm just marking out these three slots. I've removed all the metal that I can now, working to the scribed lines with a little grinder and I'm now setting up in the milling machine to finish off. I'm running this uh, clock along the edge I filed uh, at the start as a reference. Once I'm happy with it, I'll put a couple more clamps in various places. I think we'll call it quits at that. There's number one done, number two done, and I'm just about to start work on the third. This is a full depth pass just to remove this chunk. Nearly to size now, just taking a finishing cut. Okay, there's the finished slot. 
We're in size now and I'm happy with the position. There's the uh, chunk that came out. You can see the rivets there that were holding everything together. Or one of the sets of five rivets. Uh, onto these two radii now. On the last machining operation now, which is fly cutting these radii. Two and one thirty second radius, so four and a sixteenth diameter I'm machining. All of the work now is complete really. I've uh, taken a file and an emery cloth and cleaned all these edges up and uh, radiused a few corners. So now all that remains to be done is to take these bolts out, split them apart and uh, deburr the sides that are touching each other and then uh, just have a general clean up. But other than that, that's the project complete. I can start assembling the locomotive chassis now. These are the, the side frames. I have sets of wheels going in here and so on. And uh, hopefully between now and Christmas I'll be putting quite a few videos out showing all the uh, finishing operations on various bits left to go. So uh, if you're still watching at this point, well done. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.